Now, if any of your children were scared or ill or injured or lost, wouldn't you want them to come to you with that? And I said I would. And so in that moment, this beautiful nurse who I never saw again, I wonder if she was an angel, she changed my way of praying forever. Scott, you had the chance to carry the American flag at Lake Placid in, uh, in 1980, <laughs> yes. the Olympic Games. What was that like? I'm not sure why you're laughing, but I want to hear the story. What's the joke inside well, your just, head? I was, I, and I was a third guy on a three-man team. I was a tourist. I, was, I was, had no chance of meddling. I, had, I was just there to wear the rings on my jacket and to fill out the, the third spot on the team. I thought if I came in eighth that I'd won the lottery. So I'm sitting in a movie um, in the village and our team captains went off to uh, be with all the other team captains to kind of talk about um, how things are going to go and to elect the person to carry the flag in the opening ceremonies. And I, I, I'm in this movie and they pull me out and um, they, you know, my, the team captain says, you've really done it this time. And it's like, what? And he goes, no, you've really done it this time. I go, I've, no, I haven't done anything wrong. I've been in every practice. I haven't been late. I haven't done anything. I've been, like, I've been a perfect. I've been every, wherever. What, what do you mean I've really done it this time? And he goes, you've really done it this time. You've been elected to carry the flag in the opening ceremony. And it was like, why? <laughs> why me? <laughs> like, I, I'm nothing. I, you know, I was, this was sort of my, my introduction to the world. And um, and it was because, you know, of, of everything, my childhood illness and um, losing my mom and, and having all kinds of financial difficulties and coaching failures. And it's just been, it was a rough road. And the they way that our team captain pitched it to the other captains is, shouldn't this Olympic team be more about the journey than the destination? And they, they bought it. And so um, I went in for my parade uniform fitting and they asked me what size shoes I take, and I said six, and they said is seven and a half okay? Um, sure. And then every single article of clothing I tried on was like I was wearing, you know, dad's clothes, like nothing fit. It was just gigantic, and I'm pinning things, and I'm stapling things, and I'm rolling things up, and, and then I got my mittens, which like came down to here. I'm the flag bearer. And I'm, I'm like, I'm wearing clothes that don't fit, right? I'm the first thing people are going to see when the Team USA comes in. And my hat kept coming down over my eyes and I had both hands around the flag. So, like, I'm trying to keep my, my <laughs> hat, you know, from kind of blocking my vision so I don't trip and the whole team kind of like accordions on top of me. And, and it was just, I look back on that and it was a huge honor and it's something that was defining for me in my skating life and career and in my identity as an Olympian. But it was also, um, there's a great deal of comedy <laughs> in that moment as well. It was just like this hat thing. I thought they must have elected me to carry the flag because I have some sort of condition or something. I don't know. But it was, it was an honor and it was thrilling. And to this day, it's one of my proudest moments. And, um, and you know, again, you know, for many, many, many Olympians, it's more about um, the destination than the result. Scott, you've got an amazing I Am Second video. And oh, many you. of us have watched that. And, and I love how you intertwine your faith story and your testimony and the, 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 the recounting of your childhood challenges together with your ice skating. Can you just share a little bit about that right now and how those two have come together? You know, it's identity, right? I was very, very, very sick as a child. No one could figure out what was wrong with me. And so, you know, the, the, the story gets told about, you know, just sort of wondering who I am in all of this and how am I... How do I fit in with the rest of my kids my age? And, and I start skating and then the skating, I realize after a few weeks that I could skate as well as well kids. And then after a few more weeks, I realized I could skate as well as the best athletes in my grade. And then my health started to improve and it was miraculous. And then, you know, I fail a lot and I win a lot and I fail a lot and I win a lot. And then all of a sudden I'm an Olympic gold medalist and now I've got a professional career. And it was just remarkable that 13 years in, I get uh, cancer, I go through chemo and radi no, chemo and surgery. And then um, after I get married and have my first child, I'm um, 
I'm symptomatic and I, I, I go in and, and um, I find out that um, I have a brain tumor. And I thought, no, I, I think I've had enough of this health stuff. <laughs> you know, this is not fair. And I had to tell my wife and my, you know, my 14-month-old son was there. I said, um, you know, she said, what's going on? I said, I have a brain tumor. And without even skipping a beat, Tracy grabbed both of my hands and she started to pray. And it, it was there that I, I, I was awakened to a whole nother, um, a whole nother reality in, in life and in, in our um, existence here. And I knew where I was going to take everything, but it was really interesting how it, it sort of um, transpired. That tumor was treated with um, radiation, but when they did the, the biopsy of it, they found that I was born with that brain tumor and that, um, that that was what was causing me to be sick all those years as a young child. And so I look at that malady and I'm thinking, wait a minute, how upset can I be about this brain tumor when it made everything possible? Without it, nothing good would have happened. In my, I never would have found skating. I never would have been the right size because of all those years of lack of growth. I never would have, I never would have, I never would have without that brain tumor. And so when it came back uh, six years later, you know, I'm, um, I, I, they had surgery. It didn't go quite as, as, as they'd hoped. Um, they nicked an artery. It became an aneurysm. And I was praying in my room and a nurse came in and she changed my life forever. Um, you know, she said, I heard you talking. And I go, I was. She goes, well, who are you talking to? And I go, I was praying. She goes, oh, you like to pray? And I go, I do. And she, and, and she goes, so what do you do when you pray? And I just said, I, I, I'm grateful. I'm just, I'm grateful for all the things that God has done for me and in my life. And she said, oh, that's so wonderful. Who's God to you? And I said, well, he, I guess he's my father. And she said, oh, that's beautiful. I love that. He's your father. Now, 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 do you have children yourself? And I go, I do. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that great? Now, if any of your children were scared or ill or injured or lost, wouldn't you want them to come to you with that? And I said, I would. And so in that moment, this beautiful nurse who I never saw again, I wonder if she was an angel, she changed my way of praying forever. I'm, I'm not afraid to ask anymore. I was always praying out of gratitude, but now I pray out of need, and I pray out of my human frailty, and I pray uh, to get closer to, um, to Jesus, and I just pray. And it, and it was really remarkable that in this journey of illness to wellness to illness to wellness to illness to wellness, it just never stopped, that um, I was able to improve my relationship and my communication with the most perfect and powerful force in my, in my life.